Hello and welcome to your Active's EU Tweets of the Week. MEP makes hasty exit, there's still no movement over Brexit, a new Covid vaccine, the UK gets it. This week we are supported by Post Europe, more about them later on. No prizes for guessing our top story this week. Thank you, Yusuf Sire, for the gift that keeps on giving. In case you've been living under a rock for the last few days, the far-right Fidesz MEP was caught breaking the COVID-19 social distancing rules at a gay gangbang. As Bruno Waterfield explained, police broke up the party of at least 25 men as Sire tried to flee through a window, injured himself before trying to claim European Parliament immunity. Making sure that everyone would get the correct news, Hungarian journalist Sandor Siros gave a quick tutorial in how to pronounce his name. Josef Sayer. Le Chou, meanwhile, was surprised that MEPs actually have sex lives. Where have you been? Simon Nicholson ran a poll for an official hashtag, and so Twitter has spoken. Sex and drugs and EP payroll it is. Ryanair, never one to miss a marketing opportunity, suggested... There are better ways to leave Brussels than shinning down a gutter. However, many rightly focused on Sire's hypocrisy. Not only a close ally of Viktor Orban, he personally rewrote Hungary's constitution to include the line, Hungary shall protect the institution of marriage as the union of a man and a woman. He has done more than most to undermine LGBT rights in the country. In less exciting news, the interminable Brexit talks rumble on, as reporters run out of ways to say the clock is ticking. Sources from both the UK and EU Brexit teams said they are bemused by the idea that talks have entered the tunnel. One said negotiations cannot become any more intense. Martini Seltzemeyer reckons the only reason Brexit negotiators would enter a tunnel is to brick it up. And is that light at the end of said tunnel? No. It's just Michel Barnier dragging himself out to brief EU27 ambassadors on the state of play in the negotiations. Spoiler alert, there's no change. As Tom Newton Dunn reported, it appears the four-day tunnel has failed. Barnier told ambassadors that a deal hangs in the balance, but differences still persist on the three main issues. Plus a change. This week we are supported by Post Europe. Find out why when making a purchase, clear delivery information is the number one priority for Europeans. To find out more about EU consumer habits, follow the hashtag deliver for europe This week, the UK also announced that it would be administering COVID-19 vaccinations. Well played, scientists. Happy Vaccine Day, everyone, tweeted Gary Lineker. But the echoes of Brexit soon boomed. Brexiteer and recliner-in-chief MP Jacob Rees-Mogg claimed we could only approve this vaccine so quickly because we have left the EU. Frédéric Moreau was incredulous. The Vote Leave government is claiming a German-developed, Belgian-made vaccine as a British triumph. There could be no better reminder of the importance to the EU of rules of origin. And Mike Galsworthy pointed out that the vaccine was supported by a £100 million loan from the European Investment Bank. Belgium, meanwhile, will begin vaccinations from 5th of January, announced Prime Minister Alexandre de Croo. And on Monday, the European Commission signed its fifth vaccine contract, securing almost 2 billion doses of future COVID-19 vaccines. Europeans will be able to get them once they have proven to be safe and effective, said Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. But of course, Burley Monster wanted to know, are you allowed to have them all? That's it for this week. Join me again next Friday for more hijinks and rethinks in the Brussels bubble Twitter sphere.